Well, hello. Today's day is, of course, Tuesday the 18th of August, 2020. I've got cardboard boxes right behind me today. No, wait. There they are. <laughs> okay. Um, just before I should actually get into the main toy video, I just want to let you know, guys, I actually didn't do any vloggers videos on last week's Sunday because uh, there's actually a lot of reasons why. Uh, the first reason why... I actually didn't do any vloggers uh, videos on YouTube was because I actually had to deal with three thunderstorm videos uh, from last week. I actually had to deal with three thunderstorms. There was one on Monday, which is the one I actually missed, uh, but there were two on Tuesday I actually captured, but these two were dry, so they didn't actually bring in any precipitation, even though it was quite a hot and humid tropical sort of day, of course. And on Wednesday, uh, we actually had a thunderstorm that we've got in the way we had and not only that, it had a very similar fashion to that of June 2020 and uh, it was very very nice uh, Wednesday 12th of August 2020 that was the date I actually filmed that um, most recent thunderstorm in fact there's actually quite a lot of thunderstorms that I've actually missed out throughout the rest of August 2020 uh, there's actually two that I've actually missed out there was one on Monday the 10th of August 2020, which I said earlier was the one I missed because it only lasted for a very short time, just pelting down with only, maybe I, um, it didn't rain quite a lot though, only, I'm, I don't know what I'm saying here, it only just rained for quite a bit of a, um, a moderate sort of time, it wasn't as heavy as I initially um, expected today, but it was pretty amazing, it only had one lightning strike, okay, so it was pretty much a, a single cell thunderstorm, and then on um, uh, this week's uh, Monday, we actually had three clusters of thunderstorms. Um, yes, uh, in fact, I actually missed all of the three from Monday, which was, of course, yesterday. So I'm just going to rub my eye there because it's itching me there. It doesn't help when you rub your eye. It just itches your eye even more, though. But I just want to let you know, guys, um, yeah, the thunderstorm videos, I've been dealing with them. And uh, that's the main reason why. So I've actually uploaded these three on my YouTube channel on Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday of this week, with part four on Sunday, part five on Monday, and Tuesday's um, thunderstorm. The, the one I've made just now is part six. Yes, part six has been uploaded recently. So go ahead and check out my videos. So it's pretty nice. But anyways, let me just go ahead and do the flip out toy review along the way there. Oh, just before I should actually get into the actual toy review, second reason I actually had to deal with my facial hair because I absolutely think that, you know, having facial hair is so iffy. Okay? So I'm not a really um I'm not really a big fan of facial hair, but it just happens all the time. Imagine if I could just go back to somewhere, you know, in my generation I was a little bit more younger and I did not have to have that. Okay, but anyways, let me just go ahead and show you with my flip out toys I actually made. Do you remember when I did the ice cream vans I did last year's um, April? Well, guess what, guys? I'm going to show you again because uh, there's actually a lot of uh, flip out vehicles, uh, vehicle toys that look like that, and I'm actually doing a, uh, a pretty small, if not pretty big range of flip out vehicle toys. Remember when I did like Tom Asher Tank Engine sort of toys, which was like a very uh, weird sort of rip-off like Thomas the Tank Engine combined with Ash Ketchum from the Pokemon franchise. Those were the sort of videos that I've actually made um, back in 2018, I think, at the start of my channel uh, time, at the, the start of my channel's time, of course. Around, um, yes, it was December 2018, which I felt was a very iffy start for me because I just feel like making videos on YouTube was you know, one of the hardest things I've ever done in my life though, but here are the two ice cream vans. This was the first one I did, and this is the second one, and I've actually done a third one which looked like that. But, yes, when I actually made that ice cream van, um, you actually added some tape, I actually added some tape, but the problem was, was that the tape was so, so weak that the wheels, yes, it wasn't, in fact, uh, both of these, in fact, this one here and the other one, are made in the same sort of design. In fact, the boxes, <laughs> the boxes fallen over there, and it's more like the box lid. In fact, I'll call it the lid there because that's literally the the top sort of box thing. Okay, so you can store like ice cream boxes with ice cream uh, models. All of them were paper, 
so they're very unedible, as I can tell. And the best thing about these um, ice cream vans is that when you open the back of them, uh, you get like little tiny ice cream um, boxes, and inside you get like little tiny models of ice cream uh, models. They're, they're supposed to look like the real sort of fruity. Wait, didn't I actually just said the word fruity? Oh, they're not always fruity uh, ice cream. <laughs> Uh, this one here, I presume, is a chocolate flavoured uh, ice cream because it's brown. And um, yes, yeah, so it was pretty much a sort of like an advent calendar sort of thing, but no, I mean, um, it's actually more of a. Um, uh, I know it's more like an advent calendar sort of boxes. It's like one of these boxes that you find in advent calendars uh, stuck together, but these are just ice cream boxes, though. It's a bit like a, um, a blind bag sort of toy, though because you don't know what flavour of ice cream models that you normally get there. It's a little bit like imagining what flavour you get and choosing a flavour of your choice as well, which is one of the best things I could literally describe here, eh? Oh no, I think this ice cream van has seen far much better days. I better... Yeah, in fact, I might go ahead and grab a bit of tape there just to stick the ice cream van back on like so. And the lid, the lid has just taken the dive there. You know one of the saddest part is um, the wheels of all, whenever I did the ice cream vans back in April 2019, the, the very common fault they actually had with, uh, with, um, with those ice cream vans for us was that the axles and the wheels themselves, they just couldn't stand that well though, they just couldn't stick themselves properly though because of the tape and I didn't realise that the tape wasn't that helpful to um, uh, make the ice cream van sort of run very, very well though uh, but nevertheless it was pretty much a very simple sort of model there, but yeah, pretty much my first attempt at making a road vehicle like that. In fact, I actually had the same problems with my Tomasha Tank Engine uh, model uh, trains that I did. And this one here that I've made there, in fact, um, in fact, this one is actually a lot much more better, although it's got some tape in it. Uh, this thing could literally have its wheels from the path of my, um, my hands there, but I've actually got a much better version of three of these ice cream vans. In fact, if I go ahead and show you one of the more recent ones I actually made, uh, let me just show you. In fact, there's actually quite a lot more vehicles than ice cream vans. In fact, I'm actually doing a series of vehicles that involve on vans, which is very, very nice. And this is the one that I've actually made, oops, sorry, uh, the, the one I've actually made uh, recently. I've actually made this on when did I actually make this? I think it was probably Sunday or maybe Monday. I can't remember, I suppose, eh? Okay, so this is literally based on the ice cream I saw recently there. And the ice cream van um, that I actually saw recently was called the Roadrunner. You know, like the, you know, the Looney Tunes sort of character? Um, yeah, I think there was like an ice cream van, as I said earlier, called the, the Roadrunner sort of soft ice cream uh, van. And it had like characters like, you know, uh, the Roadrunner from the Looney Tunes sort of cartoon uh, shows, I believe. That was pretty much the good old days, right? But it also had characters like, you know, the Flintstones, like, you know, Freddy uh, Flintstone. Oh my god, Granddad! Flintstones! <laughs> Granddad! Oh, why am I actually getting those references from Vine Sauce? That's the YouTuber I know of. Um, there was also Mickey Mouse and Minnie Mouse on the side of the ice cream vans and then you had Roadrunner at the back there but this one doesn't it's only just a replica of what I saw recently there but I've just placed different characters there and um, it's a very nice looking ice cream van uh, apart from um, the characters that I'm actually going to show you uh, later on in this video um, I actually saw like Spongebob Squarepants and um, there was also an, a, a very weird Avengers sort of character I can't remember the name of at the moment though but it was pretty amazing seeing uh, that ice cream van. It's also a bit uh, creepy at times though, the, um, the charm as well. You might have heard it in one of my background videos though. I think I actually did it on... Remember I did the Yoshi video? Um, which had like the, the Tony Power EH200. That was a video just before the thunderstorms. Uh, whenever I did the, the, the first part of my thunderstorm webcam activity videos I did on YouTube. That was part of what summer was all about, hey guys. But anyways, uh, I'm just going to show you uh, what this ice cream looks like. It is based on the Roadrunner soft ice cream 
uh, van that I just saw recently. In fact, there's actually quite a lot of ice cream vans I've been seeing throughout the rest of summer 2020. In fact, this is also the first ice cream van I've actually saw. I actually first saw that ice cream van on the um, the 28th of May 2020, just before the last Clap for Carers uh, event thing. Pretty amazing, wasn't it, though? Eh? Very amazing. But let me just go ahead and show you the characters on the side of this ice cream van. Okay, so you've got CDR Link, and there's also another picture of CDR Link from Legend of Zelda. Link, the faces of evil, and Zelda, the one of Gamelon. You get Mario, and uh, you get Burpaw, and you get King Hornsby. Uh, there's nothing on the back there. Uh, on the top there it says Kingfisher, as opposed to the Roadrunner ice cream. On the front you've got Watara, Jack and Ryder. Three Kingfishers pulled out of the fire. <laughs> Very amazing, uh, quite cool looking face. It is literally pretty much based on the Roadrunner uh, soft ice cream. I think they had the picture of you know, the Roadrunner. Who's of course Looney Tunes uh, cartoon character, and on the other side we have King Ornsby and Burple again. But this time we've also got an another picture of Mario, and also at the front on this section here you get you got the knuckles. If I show you the way, the way here he is there, and Pikachu right over there holding an ice cream. Pretty amazing, eh? And look what it says there: often loaded, never beaten. Simply the best 99 flake, the cool ruler. Oh wait, it says that cool ruler. <laughs> it's very weird, eh? Oh wow, it's got symbols on the sides there. Reminds me a bit of Inner City uh, stuff though. Reminds me of the Inner City Swallows. Uh, that's going to get Rail fans pretty excited though. In fact, you know, speaking of Rail, uh, I think Crew is like, you know, not just uh, a bit of a railroad town, but it's also a hub for ice cream vans. Once again, we've got that sort of detailing at the side here again. For shows and events, 0121 797 553. Uh, but one of the disappointing factors is, is that there's no ice cream inside, sadly to say. But it is much nicer, and it's also a lot much more better in design compared to the other ice cream vans I've made uh, last year because it hasn't got tape. Instead, it's got stickers on the bottom there, which makes it a lot much more tougher in quality though. And on the box, I'm not sure if you can read it, it says, Come on down, that price is right. That's how I've actually seen, I think, that's the sort of top detailing I've also seen on the, um, the Roadrunner ice cream van, the soft ice cream van that I saw in my, um, my house. And uh, it can be quite annoying at times with the chiming sounds and, you know, it does cause a lot of pollution and stuff like that. And, and um, yeah, the truth is, ice cream vans do carry a lot of dirty air. Sorry about the one ice cream fan. I'm just talking to you. I'm sorry if, your eye, if my arms are just uh, looking at you, eh? I'm just gonna talk to it though. Sorry about the one ice cream fan. Just get a good life. Good luck. Okay, that's the ice cream van done. Pretty much designed after a Ford Transit van because it's got FFCV as in Ford, standing for Flip Lap Commercial Vehicles. If I show you the ice cream vans like so, I'm gonna back these guys up. Oops, I've just got a bit of a crash. Like so, but I've got a tow guys though. Uh, it's pretty amazing to have like, you know, four different ice cream vans, even though this one's missing a lid. Uh, but anyways, I'm gonna show you all the other vans I've actually just made, apart from ice cream vans. Uh, I've actually made this one here, which is like a sort of a bit of a postman pat sort of thing now. Uh, it's like a royal mail, and I, oh my goodness me, why did I say the word man when I was about to say royal mail? Okay, without doing a file here, okay, it says FFCV because this one's designed after a Ford Transit sort of van. In fact, a lot of the ice cream vans and this van here are all designed after Ford Transit vans, though, but this one is a flip flap mail sort of van instead of a royal mail sort of van. In fact, um, yes, my products are operated by raw mail, as I've just realised though. <laughs> but this one is with that mail, which is strange. Anyways, it's got brown eyes, as you can see, it's got a very weird grey sort of... I don't, want, I don't know what's that thing on the bottom of the van though. Uh, but anyways, there's a very nice um, detailings on the bonnet here, or the hood, whatever we're going to call it. It's only like 
pretty much a small sort of detailing day and normally when it comes to nothing like vehicles I don't often focus the um, the bonnet or the hood that much but there you go on the other side here it says it's that male, it's got the very nice patterned crown as you can see same sort of barcode thing at the back with those types of vehicles it's got the same wheels as those ice cream van uh, toys that I've just looked at recently though, especially the new one but if I show you another van I've actually just made it's this one here this one's actually not a full transit van because it's based on an apparel or a Vauxhall sort of van uh, it could be like a Renault Master but this one's got a very weird symbol that reminds me of I wonder what the, I don't know what oh, I wonder what these creatures were called I think I had like oh it was something from Legend in Jago and uh, there was some sort of very weird um, ghost creatures called the, the Screamers and they um there were the sort of ghost things that were sort of reminded me of the um the green ghosts from Ghostbusters that I can't remember the name of. And uh there were sort of like little ghosts. Apart from the fact that they look like green ghosts from the Ghostbusters franchise, well who you gonna call? <laughs> um these were the sort of like little ghosts that you attach um the minifigure you often swap with the ninja mask or the the hair with the screamo ghosts on the top. Uh just to look like you know, the, the characters themselves are persist though. But anyways, this is of course a Screamers Movano. Hopefully we've got the name right though. It is a Movano sort of van though. Screamers Movano. In fact, I, I would love to make a whole bunch of vehicles that are led into Screamers because as well, you know, of the one I'm just looking at there of course. Of course, it's literally designed after a minibus because it's got windows like so. I know the windows are pretty dark but what can you say? It's got blue eyes. Once again, it's got a very weird logo, which is supposed to be a screamer from Legend in Jago. You know, the 2015 summer sets. It's got a pretty visible smile. Can you see the smile, guys? Eh? It's got very weird headlights because it's designed after a Vauxhall Movano or a Pale Vauxhall. Oh, I don't know what I'm saying it. A Pale Movano Renault Master sort of van, I believe. And on the bottom there, there's a bit of licensing info which is nice to see and instead of orange wheels you've, you've just got white wheels with a bit of black pretty much a very sort of realistic, semi-realistic sort of van eh? It looks very, very nice, blue eyes yeah, in fact it looks sort of nice, once again you've got the um, the back door opening up again pretty much the sort of signature thing when it comes into these um, cardboard uh, toys I could make like you know you know, other types of vans. In fact, um, the reason why I want to make vans even more than cars is because their, their doors open at the back. But I could even make, like, you know, SUVs. That would be a very good thing to do, I would say. Very nice looking vehicle, though. I'm just gonna maybe put right behind. In fact, I might put the Royal Mail or flip that Mail van at the back as well. And I'm gonna show you another cool looking toy I've actually just made. You remember when I talked about Thailand 2020? Well, there's a very weird looking uh, rendition of King Hornsby. Now, one thing uh, about this hat was was that originally this was supposed to have like a long neck, but because it kept on, uh, I think the head was literally irritating me because the beak overall, I know it's multicolored, and I, in fact, it's not many multicolored, it's more like fiery colors overall, though. It's meant to represent what King Hornsby looks like, though. It's got the, um, the cask on the top, eh? And the reason why I actually had to shorten his neck there is because although originally I was supposed to have a long neck, when I place my King Hornsby hat on, oh, goodness me, you're gonna laugh at this one, guys, eh? <laughs> uh, it just pecked at me. So it just pecked on my eye and it made my eyes in agony. So that's why I had to come in and just, you know, uh, just basically chop the neck and chop the head off King Hornsby and then reattach. Uh, the head into the body, but nevertheless it looks sort of nice and cool in D-Day guys looks like his neck is a bit hunched up today, but sort of very nice, the tail overall looks very, very nice indeed you can just wag it, you know, the tail you know, it's a little bit like a dog, but this is a bird it's got some further detailing, it's like so looks like I've got a bird in the head today though well, not really, but it's just a um it's just a headband though, but anyways, it looks sort of very nice indeed. Uh, one of the most iffiest part of it 
there is is that you can see you can actually just see a bit of dark lining there, which in a sense I forgot to erase that one of course, but very very nice. It's got a red eye. In fact it's got big red eyes on both sides. Which is very very nice indeed. I'm actually glad I can just turn the birds like so. It's a very nice looking design. Oops sorry. Um yeah, it looks very very nice. But I think the problem is is that it could probably um yeah, the head overall with the beak on the front, it could probably poke on uh kids' eyes and then the next thing they'll be crying because you know, their eyes are sore and it's because of that, you know, headband. But anyways, it's quite a good looking headband. Looks very nice. In fact, this sort of headband would probably make a you know, uh, although it could literally just peck you, um, this is the sort of headband that would literally make people laugh a lot though. It's pretty amazing, isn't it guys, eh? Very amazing. Very nice um, black bar on the, um, the middle of the tail though. Very, very nice indeed. And it was pretty much tricky, but it was pretty simple at times though. It was not too hard and um, yeah, not looking too bad, I guess. But let me show you some flip flap origami toys along the way, though. And most of them are flapping bird toys. Oh my goodness me, how many? Oh my goodness me, how many we've got today, eh, guys? Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we've just got like three cool. Oh my goodness me, three cool looking toys to showcase, and eight flip flap origami toys just to show you guys. Let me just start with this one here. And uh, a very thanks to a YouTuber called Sturm Wind, I think his name is called Sturm Wind, who actually requested me to make one of the uh, one of the first animals that uh, ever existed and then became extinct. It's an extinct special looking toy, in fact it's got font that is in the style of Extinction Rebellion. And this product sells for like fifteen pounds ninety five and it's called the Animale Caris, the extinct prehistoric fish shrimp thing uh troop five pack. And the animals are called Radiant uh Radi oh my goodness me. Radio Dance. Radio Dance. How do you say that one? I think I think it's called Radio Dance. And that's what they all look like. Okay, so they look pretty pretty nice. Uh, very, very nice indeed. They are a type of aphopods. Pretty much a crustacean like creature uh, thing. And look what it says there a product based on a request currently formulated by Storm or Stormwind. So, thank you, Stormwind, uh, for requesting that. So, I might just go ahead and unpack this. And I've actually designed them pretty simply because um, I'm just the sort of person who likes to just, you know, Rush for things and then just you know make put up products in the way I really want you know to in a sense eh? So here are the um, oh my goodness me it's a pretty hard word to say Anamalacaris uh, creatures. So we've got like an orange one. I'm not sure if you can see the eyes on those creatures though, uh, but they look sort of very very weird. There's the eyes on that one there. They've got feelers in the front. And I've got a, a very weird sort of, very weird looking tail at the back there. There's a red one there. I've actually made two red ones, of course, for the fact that yeah, shrimp come in these sort of colours like that. Very, very nice. There's a brown one here. I think um, maybe the best thing. I think one big thing I could do is probably um, uh, improve on just making the amount of legs I really want to because there's not enough legs. Probably like 11 legs altogether, like 22. What do you say, guys? I think the appropriate. Um, uh, oh, I've just broke, guys. <laughs> Sorry about that one, eh? The appropriate uh, estimate of legs that Anna Malakaris has has got like 22 or 11 on each side, and this one's like, I think the one I'm handling is, of course, a pinkish one. Not really, you know, familiar with pink, but pretty amazing, isn't it, guys, eh? Um, but there you go. Thank you, Stone Wind, for requesting my uh, sort of product I could literally do. In fact, the most common of all extinct animals I've done, like, were the dinosaurs, and then I have to do this. Thank you very much, Stone Wind. Actually, there are a few extinct animals I've actually done. I've done the thylacine or the Tasmanian tiger. Pretty amazing, wasn't it, eh? I'll put that one there because I might probably um, put all the products away after I'm finished, maybe except for the vans because they're vehicles. 
and if I dare put them here, yeah, the vehicles would probably break. And I don't want that one, eh? I don't want it. No. But anyways, let me just go ahead and find another uh, good for that product here. Which one is it going to be? Oh, this one here. These are, of course, adult endangered green sea turtles. And it's a, uh, I wonder what this is. That's very interesting. It's a small cord five pack. £14.50. Okay, if I take a look back at the packaging here, you can start to see the um, turtles, like so. Very, very interesting sort of creatures like that. And uh, very, very amazing indeed. In fact, they're endangered. That's what we all know because, you know, they have a lot of threats. In fact, a ton of threats, like, you know, oil spills, uh, poaching and predation, and also the threat of some various invasive species. I'm pretty sure rats do really eat a lot of, you know, green sea turtles. And also the warming seas as well, though. Global warming and climate change, that's also another thing, though. The amount of coral uh, dying from oceans, though, that's also another main reason why these sea, oh my goodness me, these sea turtles are going to get wiped out one day though. But anyways, I'm just going to show you these guys very nicely, of course. And, um, pretty amazing, isn't it? These sort of turtles. Oh my goodness me, this looks... Oh, that's interesting. I actually realised green sea turtles, uh, I know they've got brown on the front, but that's supposed to be their beaks, I believe. I actually didn't realise turtles have beaks at the front. And the main reason why they've got beaks at the front is because... Um, yes, they're not dinosaurs, they're just sea turtles. Um, yeah, I think the main reason why they've got beaks is probably for the fact that they're mainly plant eaters or herbivores. They mainly eat, like, seaweed or kelp or algae. Um, but in the, I think juvenile sea turtles tend to eat, like, you know... Various sea creatures ranging from fish to anything else, apart from, you know, the deadly poisonous ones, the stingy ones, like, you know, jellyfish and stuff like that. I do know leather, you know, the leatherback sea turtles tend to eat, like, you know, uh, jellyfish and sponges. That's another main thing that they also love to eat. Watch out, SpongeBob! Sea turtles are gonna after you, yeah. But, anyways, these guys um, look pretty amazing. In fact, the first time I've actually seen these guys was at um, a local zoo in Malaysia and another one in the Sea Life Centre Aquarium in Birmingham. I've actually seen them around maybe eight and a half years ago, maybe nine years ago, around October 2011. That was pretty amazing. Very amazing sort of trip, I believe, looking at marine animals like that. Okay, so that was, that was pretty much uh, an amazing trip. Just to go ahead and see uh, critters like that. Very amazing indeed. I'm just going to put the um, turtles away though. Hopefully they're not going to suffocate from this envelope though. At least it's not a plastic bag though. They're just fake green sea turtles though. But they make like a perfect sort of tropical uh, beach uh, scenery thing. Yep, perfect as a water toy, especially at the beach or the coast. Or a summer water toy is what that packaging has said to me there. Okay. And I know sea turtles, like the green ones, of course, can you know turn up at you know at tropical waters, but they also will turn up at temperate areas, rarely, of course. But let me show you another of that product. Um, all of them, I'm just gonna look at. Oh, you actually thought I was gonna do flapping birds, but no. This one here is the African yellow-billed duck family um, twelve pack, thirteen pounds ninety-five. It comes with two adult ducks, the male and the female, but it also comes with ten ducklings, which look pretty much similar to the mallard ducklings that I actually had recently there. Very amazing indeed. Oh yeah, oh, would you look how cute these guys are. Quack, quack, quack. Anyways, I'm just going to go ahead and unpack these little duckies. Cute little duckies. Well, let's just start off with the adults here first. Uh, one thing I've actually realised is that the blue tip one uh, is of course the male. The green tip one I'm going to show you here is the female. Although they look pretty much similar, um, the green tips and the blue tips doesn't exactly mean it's all about gender differences. Oops, sorry, I've just dropped. <laughs> Why well, am I actually performing in a very iffy way these days? There, my like videos on YouTube. Um, she's got eyelashes. 
and she's got a smile on the yellow beak. There's a very interesting, uh, cool looking tail feather action, brown one of course. And the best thing about these toys is because uh, they've just got detailed with, you know, crayons and pencils and whatnot and stuff like that, and free of anything felt tip, penned, or markered in a sense. Um, they make great water toys. And uh, let me show you the main one here. I think the, the blue tipped, um, if I remember in the previous video, uh, the blue tipped African uh, yellow bill ducks tend to be the ones which are actually from Northeast Africa. Those ones there. I think that's a, that's a sort of subspecies I actually tend to recognize. So this one might be the nominate. Okay. And let me show you the ducklings there. Because there'll be people saying, oh, you need to show the ducklings because you think the ducklings look pretty much so different to the mallards. Yeah, the mallard ducklings. Uh, but, anyways, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to show you them, like so. Oh my goodness me, look, would you look at that? Ah. Pretty much similar, isn't it, guys? Eh? Pretty much similar. Uh, but, anyways, that's just about it, guys. Eh? I'm just going to repack these duckies in a sense they in fact I've actually already seen the ducklings before and um, yeah I think it was like a um a saw sort of video that I did. Remember I did like the video which featured Megalosaurus? That was probably one of the worst flip out videos I've done ever on my YouTube channel because I wasn't feeling like doing, you know, toy views like that. And the main reason was was because I was literally given the task of making like three insect or bug themed flip out products. In fact I might make some more Hopefully, I guess, I suppose. But let me try and pick off one of the flapping bird products here. This is the one I've actually made on Monday, the 17th of August, 2020. It's called the Adult Brown Headed Girl Small Breeding Flock 5 Pack, £8.50. Now, these guys are going to be heavily uh, designed a lot more differently compared to the brown headed girls that we used to see, and they're also going to be very different in design compared to the black headed girls. Uh, as I've just realised, brown-headed girls from Asia, specifically China where they breed, especially in the Gobi Desert, and tropical Asia where they roost, um, these guys are actually a lot more heavier than the black-headed girls. And they have like an average low weight of, I think the lightest they can get to is like 450 grams, um, to about 714 grams, which is probably the heaviest uh, weight for these girls, sea girls of course. Uh, once again, they've got like the chocolate, the dark chocolate brown heads because they're in breeding plumage. But because it's August, they'll just have a dark patch on their heads and uh, just leave just only just white, I believe, because it's like the non breeding season. And you know, whenever it comes to August and towards February or March, that's literally like the non-breeding season, okay? You know, that's literally the time when the seagulls are done, all the other animals and all the other birds are done for the breeding season and they're all done for summer and wemo. That's probably about it, alright? I have to say, these guys flap pretty much uh, nicely, I guess. In fact, this one here was pretty much an iffy fly, but nevertheless, these girls I actually thought I was going to say the word guys, eh? But the, these are seagulls, or girls, as we're going to call them. Um, they actually look pretty fantastic, though. And, but anyways, I, I was going to do, like, six and six items, though. Like, you know, non-fish sort of toys, I believe. I was going to have six seagulls and six uh, non-fish items, though. Uh, with, like, folk tip pen de detailings, of course. I was going to do, like, a flying ant day sort of black-headed girl product, though, but... Anyways, that's that. But anyways, let me just move on to this one here, which is pretty much, um, I would just say, very absurd. In a sense, it's called the really observed, um, oh my goodness me, it's called the fish eating Canada goose, uh, what's it called again? Canada geese gaggle uh, 12 pack, gaggle being a group of geese. Once again, it costs about £16.95, and look at that, splash! Pretty amazing, isn't it, eh? And uh, it's quite interesting, uh, Canadian geese are primarily um, herbivores as they mainly tend to eat grass and seeds and oats and wheat and whatnot and stuff like, you know, potatoes and other crops like that but they also feed on human scraps and also fish um, what's quite funny is, is that many geese species tend to be herbivores as I just said earlier before 
And one thing about geese is, is that they rarely do eat fish, but they can when they need to, especially during the winter. You know, even when it's so harshly cold. But luckily enough, we're still in summer, and the fish in our lakes and ponds are still alive, which is amazing to see. Uh, but anyways, let me just show you one of the Canadian geese, which looks pretty nice. Sort of same design, I believe, pretty much the same, sort of a similar design to what I've actually made before, I believe. Just, just goes to show you how amazing these geese are in flight bay. In fact, I actually saw a lot of Canadian geese in my area, and also the biggest flock I've seen Canadian geese so far was in Samwell Valley, the RSPP Samwell Valley in uh, Samwell or West Bromwich. And I actually went there on Saturday last week because I really want to see a very particular bird that I really wanted to come across during this year. I know it's been very hard for me just to encounter various amounts of animals during the start of 2020. Although I have seen like, you know, rare birds like, you know, the red shank and the dunlin as well as the oyster catcher because I'm normally not the sort of person who comes to the coast during winter. But luckily enough, I saw them, which is the nicest thing I could say, eh? Uh, anyways, let me just show you the fish. In fact, there's actually quite a lot of birds that I've just seen this year. I've seen common terns, loads and loads of wildlife I could literally just name. I've seen red foxes, grey squirrels, uh, badgers. And in fact, I actually had one badger, which was uh, striding along. We only had just one badger, okay? That was very amazing, and we had like... Uh, paper straw bats. I saw like common paper straw bats uh, catching insects. Since in fact the first time I actually saw them was around April or May. You know the warm parts of these months, I believe. But let me show you the fish. These are all designed after salmon. In fact, they're not salmon coloured, and uh, they look sort of different to the ones that are featured in the late summer uh, feast of lesser blackback gulls. Uh, the twelve pack I've made. But they look sort of nice, I believe. Sort of nicely made. I've got the fan in the background because it's actually quite humid, although it's actually quite a bit of a cool, warm summer's day. It's actually not as hot as last week. Well, I've got to tell you guys, though, these products of all that I've just made so far, they look very, very nice. I love the fish. Indeed. Anyways, that's that product here done. There you go. Uh, oh, I just burped again. Didn't mean to do that, guys, eh? Didn't mean to do that. But uh, anyways, let me just go ahead and move on to another water product, which is this one here. The White Breasted Cormorant Fishing Flock 12 Pack. Now, I've actually made a product like this before. You remember I did a video which was like, Oh, that's just great! I'm at least still that warm man in this trap with nowhere to go! That was one of my favourite um, slogans. Uh, when it was so cold, especially during uh, autumn, winter and spring and also towards summer because our summers are not always perfect as what we all expect to have. Like you know, our weather in the UK is very changeable. We can have cold summers, dry summers with droughts, hot summers, wet summers with thunderstorms and you know, heavy downpours and floods and whatnot. But there you go. Summers in Britain can be highly changeable. But anyways, this £14.95 product is based on the time when I actually saw uh, Cormorants at the RSPB Reserve in Samwell Valley. I think it was Samwell Valley. In fact, there's a big lake called Forge Mill Lake, which I think is one of the biggest lakes in Samwell, uh, which is literally a part of West Midlands, next to West Bromwich, I believe, and Wolverhampton, I I'd say. And there you go, there's the fish here. I don't know what these fish are, but they look sort of cool. Let me just go ahead and pack um, what we have mate. Looks very, very nice indeed. Hopefully it's going to be much better than the um, the other product that I did on, um, on uh, November. The 18th of November, if I remember. But anyway, let me just show you the fishies there. There's an orange one here. Okay, I might show you all the fishies there. There's a blue one here. don't know how frightened or happy they look. Pretty much hard to see. The males often have red on the top. Not sure if you can see that from the camera lens. Okay. Red lines on the top. Okay, there's the orange one there. Very, very nice. And um, there's two more. Two of 
the same looking fish but in two different colours. Very amazing, eh? Uh, let me just show you the um, cormorants, which look like this. And uh, what's very funny about these cormorants is that uh, they've got a bit of a very weird yellow sort of gape. And yes, the gape is of course yellow, as I can work out. Very similar to the great cormorants and the shags that you often find in the Fine Islands and other parts of the British coast where they live. I'd say that shags during winter, if I remember compared to cormorants, are very rare in land and tend to focus on non-breeding areas along the coast. But anyways, um, these um, white-breasted cormorants tend to inhabit so well in freshwater lakes and ponds and you know streams and other wetland areas and stuff like that and even towards the coast. Very nice indeed. In fact, compared to the Great Cormorant, there's no brown in it at all. There's no brown at all, as I can work out, guys. I'd say it looks very, very nice. There's brown at the back, or right behind the head there. Same sort of detailing on the tail here. And it's also got a name. White-breasted cormorant! In fact, I should have showed you the names though. In fact, the Canadian geese also had names. The brown-headed girls also had names. And there were summer breeding plumaged uh, ones, of course. But these ones here, the white-breasted cormorants, are named like so because... See the whiteness on their, uh, their breast or neck section, I believe? You know, it's probably a little bit similar to that of a mallard duck. You know, whenever I think of a mallard duck, they've got like reddish-brown breasts. Don't know if that's actually going to be demonetized, the word breasts. Don't know if that's very sensitive. But anyways, these guys have also got sort of limey green eyes, as I can work out. They've got like hooked beaks. So I've just touched my face. I've just rubbed my face there. But anyways, when they fly, they look sort of prehistoric. Sometimes make me think of a pterodactyl. Or should I say, sometimes they literally make me think of a pterodactyl. And yes, once again, they look so prehistoric at all times. Why is there so many itchies on my body though? And my goodness me, I just keep on rubbing my eyes and scratching my back. So there's loads of itchies there. I just feel like there's some weird goddamn bug biting me. But anyways, that's that product done here. Okay, we've got two more flip that products to unpack. Before this video ends, this one here is called the Caspian Stepper Girl Fishing Frenzy 12 Pack. And it's called the... Ooh... I wonder what this is. Post breeding adult girls versus trevallies. I think trevallies is like a, a species of fish uh, that I've actually heard of. I think they're also called jacks. 14 pounds is of course the price. Oh, that was pretty iffy. Uh, sort of just jerked the, um, the packaging there. But anyways, there's the back of the packaging now. Look at these seagulls. They look so, so voracious. Oh my goodness me, it looks like they just want to gobble them for good because there was one part in Blue Planet where there was like sooty turns, there were some juvenile sooty turns being gobbled up by giant trevallies, which in a sense might be a different sort of species, I believe, compared to those, I think they're called common jacks that I've got in this sort of product, eh? I've got the Caspian girls out, but let me just show you the um, fish. I've got there the trevallies or the jacks I've got and it looks sort of different because they sort of look like oh my goodness me you remember I did the dinosaurs uh, products though I actually designed fish like that I think there's a fish called the Dunkletostetus I think I actually made these guys before but these are the common jacks the jacks I believe the common jacks as you can tell they've got like a yellow bar right next to the um, caudal fin or tail where they go swish 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 on side to side like all fish do is a very interesting eye okay mouth detailing like so I'll show you like that okay looks very very nice isn't it looks all very very cool isn't it hey guys I might show you all the fishies that I have one two three four five do I have a sixth one? I don't know that's pretty weird. Let me just count. Oh, wait, there it is there. That's what we have, guys. I'm just going to show you all the fishies before we move on to the seagulls. There you go. That's what they all look like, guys. Oh, wait. 
Hang on. Actually, I didn't handle all the fish that well, so I'm just going to count them. One, two, in fact, I, <laughs> in fact, I had two just falling down, which was not very good. I'll have one, two, three, uh, four, and five, six. There you go. Now that's probably about it, guys, eh? But let me just show you the Caspian gulls, because you might be thinking, oh, don't they look similar to lesser blackback seagulls? But they actually have uh, grey backs, which actually a lot... Uh, I, I don't know what I'm saying here, but these grey backs, though, the Caspian gulls, uh, tend to have backs which look actually a lot, look a lot more like the yellow-legged gull from the Mediterranean areas of Europe. And um, they also sort of resemble the herring gull. Okay, sort of similar, and it looks sort of less of like that girl like because of the yellow legs, but they're not. Okay, so pretty much the same sort of size, but in fact, whenever I'm looking at this, it looks like a miniature version of the yellow legged girls. But I'm actually uh, not covering a lot of these guys, a lot of the yellow legged uh, girls, because I initially thought they're actually about the same size, but they're actually larger than I initially thought of. They're probably about almost the same design as the Great Blackback Girl. Very weird. But anyways, uh, yes, I think both the Great Blackback Girl and um, the Yellow Legged Girl from the Mediterranean areas of Europe, they look more larger than the Mallard, whereas the Lesser Blackbacks and Herring Girls and possibly the, the, um, the Caspian Girls, they look pretty much in the same size as a Mallard. Same size as the Mallard Duck though, but anyways, same sort of wing beats like so, but anyways, that's it, the Caspian Girls. In fact, I've actually made Caspian Girls back in June 2019, and mind you, they were pretty much unsuccessful that I actually wore long sleeves during summer of last year, but because it's summer 2020, look at me, I'm wearing a t-shirt, hooray! So this year summer is actually feeling a lot much more well adapted than last year I would say because last year summer was freaking cold at the start and then record breaking temperatures were so hot very unbearable but anyways here's this product here not sure you can see that but this is based on a product uh, based on a video that was on a YouTube channel called Ralph Hancock and he actually did like a short film about uh, a seagull that eats pigeons I think it's a lesser blackback girl and look what it says here uh, lonesome lesser black-backed uh, girl versus um, checkered pigeons five pack seven pounds fifty. I'm not sure if you can see that from the from the camera though. The text though, of course, looks very interesting. You get some checkered pigeons, and on the back of the packaging, there you go. There's a seagull uh, about to maraud a pigeon, which does look checkered to me though. Looks pretty much like a normal sort of. Wait, that looks more like. Oh my goodness, really, it looks like a nudie sort of pigeon, eh? Ain't he wearing glasses? Ain't pigeons are supposed to wear glasses like that? Maybe it's not glasses, though. Maybe it's just some sort of weird error that I've just added on, like, you know, just added thick lines and things like that, though. But anyways, let's just go ahead and unpack this. I do know there, there is a place called Hyde Park in London, and there's literally one lesser blackback seagull that comes in and devours a pigeon. Yeah, that was pretty gruesome, but... Never expected to have like you know a seagull coming in and eat pigeons. Look at this, very cranky and angry looking face, as you can see. Although it doesn't have a mouth, like all flapping bird products are. Well, most, if not usually, a lot of flapping bird products tend to lack like you know um, beaks with expressions, especially the seagulls. But anyways, this guy overall flaps well. But let me show you the pigeons, which are of course the checkered pigeons. Overall, they sort of flap very well. In fact, I actually haven't made pigeons for quite a while, eh? But these guys look sort of amazing. In fact, I could literally, oh goodness me, I could literally like, like make loads and loads more of more of these guys. Hopefully, by the end of this year, which will be great. Hooray! Look at that. It's so amazing when you see pigeons up in the sky. Okay, there's the other one here. Oh my goodness me, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if these wings are. I don't think they look checkered to me though. It looks more like, you know, I'm sorry, I just sniffed my arm there. You know, scribbles of, of black everywhere on the body and the hump and the wings. There's uh, the last one here. 
Okay, looks very, very nice. Flat, flat, flat. Very interesting sort of black sort of line there. Okay, very, very nice. Well, looks all good to me. Very, very nice indeed. And let's not forget the names as well, because if I do forget the names, well, that's probably going to get some YouTubers cheesed off. Rock Dove, Feral, Checkered, Pigeon. And if I can work out both cigars and pigeons, actually, I might go to Pigeons Day, because originally, before people domesticated them in the Mediterranean, I believe, uh, pigeons nested on crevices and cliffs, especially at the coast. Okay, so that's why they, they named us Rock Doves. Very amazing, isn't it, though? And you might have probably seen, I think there's a breed of pigeon called the Blue Bar Pigeon, which is often designed after the wild rock doves that you might probably see in Scotland and um, in other parts of the world where pigeons are exceptionally common. But anyways, as of today, numbers have grown. In fact, there's like one million pigeons in New York City, in, in the United States of America, and there's like, uh, when you compare to here, in the UK, especially London, it's like more than a million of pigeons. My goodness me, I don't know how many pigeons are there in, in London, but I bet you what, guys, if I was in London, in Trafalgar Square, or should I say Trafalgar Square in London, well, I'd be like, oh my goodness me, I'd be like, you know, more than a million pigeons. My goodness me, pretty much amazing, isn't it, eh? Well, that's just probably about it, guys. Hopefully you've seen everything throughout the rest of Tuesday the August Tuesday the 18th of August 2020. Hopefully I'm not failing the whole video here. Oh my goodness, William. Oh my god. Maybe I need to go back a bit... Yeah, my mouth is just so, so... Um, how would you say? A bit talkative, but a bit... Um, a bit rough when it comes to talking though. But anyways, that's probably about it, guys. So I've just covered the, um, the ice cream vans, the flapping birds, and the other flip flap products like, you know, the extinct shrimp called the Animalo Caris. Oh yeah, I've got it guys, the Animalo Caris uh, shrimps and also the green sea turtles. Okay, so that was pretty much about it guys. Eh? Um, I don't know what products I might be making from future videos. Hopefully I might try and do more vloggist episodes throughout the rest of this month, just before uh, this month ends. And my hands are a bit dirty because I was mucking about. Actually, I must have been touching some flip flap uh, toy things that had like, you know, grey pieces of pencil lead and soot. Yucky, I might have to wash my hands after making this video, eh? And I promise I have to make sure. I'll make sure I wash my hands for 20 seconds because if I don't wash my hands for 20 seconds, well, I'm gonna get the coronavirus. But, hopefully, hopefully I'm not gonna go and get the, um, virus again, hopefully, as I'm making this video here, I'm not going to make myself as, you know, part of the corona cases today. Why am I such, oh my goodness me, I am such a rough talker. But anyways, please give this video a like, if you enjoyed this video so far, go ahead and subscribe to my YouTube channel, as I always advertise my YouTube channel, as always, as per usual. And as always, if you have lasted this long in this video, I hope you enjoyed it, and I'm really sorry for taking a bit of a long time to get the Thunderstorm videos uh, uploaded right now on my YouTube channel, and I'm just glad uh, I've just got this video um, so far to be made, and thank God I'm just so glad I've just covered all the flip-up toys that I've just made recently on my YouTube channel, and it's so, so interesting. Anyways. Thanks for watching guys, I hope you have a very lovely summer, even though the weather is not looking as nice as what we used to have in the last weeks or so. Anyways, that's it guys, bye for now.